So now this next dish that we get into, there's going to be a lot more tips and techniques involved. It's going to be dealing with salmon. Those other dishes we did were, were a little easier. This is a little bit harder, but it's not that hard. It's, it might take you a couple more times to practice it. But I'm going to show you um, some shortcuts and techniques on salmon, how to mess up and how to make it come out just like mine. So when you buy salmon, there's three types. There's farm raised. There's many types, actually. There's farm raised, which is okay. It's not that good for you. This is a coho wild salmon, which looks like the farm raised, that red color. Then my favorite is a sockeye salmon. It's really, really red. Now, it's, it's, it's a really distinct, different flavor. I like it. So most people would like this coho salmon. It's not as strong of a salmon flavor as the sockeye. And your farm raised is a very similar same flavor to the wild, but your your best one is the coho probably for you. It's a little more expensive, but it uh, you can find it frozen. It's just as good frozen. You can probably get it at a better price. So now this dish is that organic pomegranate reduction. So the next technique is tip is once again like your port wine. You got to use the best pomegranate juice out there, and I've tried 20 brands. People think pomi because of advertising is the best. It's really thick and overly sweet, and it's not even organic. It is more expensive than this brand, and this is with organic, made with all organic, with blueberries, and it is excellent. It's not as it's very sweet still, but not as sweet, and it's not as thick as pomi. And for cooking, it comes out better. So this you can find at uh, Whole Foods, um, and it's actually only about four ninety nine or five ninety nine um, for this. So it's it's the same price or less than the pomi. Sapa Shop actually carries this Lakewood brand too. They have so many juices, mango. So when you see this sauce, you can replicate this sauce in other flavors. Instead of a pomegranate reduction, use mango juice. It'll be a mango reduction or a pineapple or whatever. So from this one recipe, you can make 10 different pomegranate reductions or mojos, which is a Cuban sauce. It's a orange mojo or pomegranate mojo. And this is the most important thing is this brand. If you can't find this brand, use the palm meat. It's still excellent. A little thicker, you're going to thin it out. So it's not that big of a deal, but search. Okay, so what we're going to start by doing is we're going to sh the technique is how to cook your salmon, get it right. If you're a salmon lover, you're supposed to cook it almost all the way through, leave it a little bit rare on the inside. Not rare, medium rare, um, so it doesn't dry out. People who aren't salmon lovers usually want to cook it all the way through, so that's fine. But it's uh, it'll start to dry a little bit on you. Um, so that's it's either depends on how you, you cook it the way you like it. I cook it almost all the way through. I'm not a salmon lover. I'm more sole trout, the white fishes, but I eat salmon because it's very healthy for you. So we're going to start out. We're using blackened spices. Now I make my own blackened spices, but if you go in the um, the spice rack at Stop or Shop, any grocery store, they have the blackened spice mix ready near your cumin, near your salts, and all that stuff. And I would buy it. It's the one they have is excellent. I make it because. I just looked it up one day and I like to omit things and add things and, and you know make my own flavor. So all we do is the salmon's already a little wet, so we're just gonna dip it in the blackened spice. Okay? And your main ingredients in the spices are oregano, paprika, um, cumin, um, uh, parsley, salt, garlic powder, ch um, a little bit of chili paste I put in there, and, and that's it. You get it nicely coated. So we're gonna get our pan nice and hot. You don't need a lot of oil, two, three tablespoons, just enough to, to get the salmon nice and brown, nice and blackened on one side, and then you flip it and cook it on the other side, and then I usually finish it off in the oven. These blackened spices are excellent. People worry they're not really overly spicy, they, they give it a great flavor on tuna, blackened swordfish, anything you blacken is great. You'll see the nice color, and it actually comes out kind of black when you saute it, that's why it's called blackened. It gives it such good flavor that you don't even need a salt. When you blacken salmon, you can put this over rice. You don't even need a sauce to it. That salt and, and all those, that the chili and everything into it, it, it gives it a lot of flavor. So once again, just like I talked about the oil before, about the crab cakes, the oil has to be nice and hot. If you dump it in when it's not hot, it'll probably stick to it and it won't cook good. So we're going to get our oil nice and hot, almost as smoky. And I can even dump a little bit in just to test it if you want. I, don't, I do everything by eye. Once again, you guys are going to have a little problem in the beginning. You're going to have to practice. Once you do it, you know, a few times, you'll see by eye, you'll know. And this over here, when it's going to get hot really fast at home, it's going to take a little bit longer. See, I can tell it's already, it's almost there. See how smoky it got? So we're going to take our salmon.
Now we're going to get it nice and blackened on one side. Then I'm going to flip it, cook it again, and that'll be the way I like it. A little bit medium rare inside. But then I'll show you how to cook in the oven, especially with this pan, or you can use a casserole or whatever once we do our sauce. See how nice that color is? It's basically ready. We'll let it sit a little more. Alright, so now your salmon's ready. We're going to flip it over. And look how nice and a little bit burned and blackened and, and crisp that, that looks. So that's ready. That was about a couple minutes. Just turn it and make it, when it looks like that, stop the video. Get that ring. When you look at it, when it looks like that, you flip it. Once again, it might take a little bit longer your house. Once the oil's hot, it should. It should take the same amount of time. A couple minutes. A couple minutes, I'm going to do it on this side. And then it's going to be rare on the inside, and we'll finish it off in the oven. If you really want to cheat, you throw in the microwave. I don't advise that, but it depends on how you cook. So I usually do it in the oven with the sauce. So now I'm going to take my salmon. I'm going to leave it on the side right there. We're going to throw away this oil because that's not that's going to be too strong. We're going to use a new clean saute pan. All right, so we're going to start out. Now this sauce, believe it or not, is going to be almost exactly the same to the Tony Port wine reduction. But people say, I can't believe all your dishes taste so different. You're just, I'm just integrating and taking out one um, item and, and putting in another, and it makes it seem like such a big difference. But it's always your bases. Onions, garlic, oil, touch of chicken stock, touch of brown sauce, and one change. This time, instead of port wine, it's pomegranate. So the pan's hot, two tablespoons of olive oil again, a little bit of white onions. You can use shallots. Shallots actually will work even better with this, but the pomegranate's sweet, so I'm using onions. And then once again, clove of garlic. I idiot proof it for everybody. I keep it simple because I want you to cook. Now, when I write my cookbook, I might make it more difficult and add some different ingredients and more sophisticated, but I don't need to because the dishes come out so amazing. And keeping it easy, it'll make you want to make them and not want to make them. So you'll want, if I keep things easy, you'll want to cook and you'll want to do them. So once this gets brown again, we're going to do butter. We're going to leave the butter out this time. I don't need it. We're just going to do the white wine. Actually, what the hell? I'm going to add some butter. My brother loves to cook with butter. So a little bit's not, not bad for you. It's actually good for you. So once again, it's ready, the garlic and onions. We're going to add your butter. You're going to get the pan nice and hot and deglaze it. Pour a cup of white wine. Two to three cups, two cups of pomegranate juice for this dish. I make a little extra sauce because I put spinach on there. Or, or, any kind of vegetable. I grill some grilled veggies and put them on the plate and put the salmon on top of the grilled veggies and the sauce on top. So now you got your pomegranate juice. We're going to do a pinch of salt once again. I'm going to bring this over. I keep walking over there. And just a little bit of salt because once again the salt and sugars work great together. And then I'm going to do vegetable stock or a touch of chicken stock, two ounces. Cornstarch, flour, or Two ounces of my veal stock brown, veal bone anyways. Parsley or cilantro, I add cilantro because cilantro is one of my favorite herbs. Uh, it's very strong compared to parsley, which isn't. Parsley is more of a garnish. So if you don't like that strong cilantro flavor, use parsley. Italian flat parsley. So now once again, done. We're going to add our salmon back in. And I'm going to show you, you could take this. I love these saute pans. That's why I tell you buy these. They come with a rubber handle that doesn't get hot, and we take it off just because we want to work fast over here. That that rubber handle can go in the oven at 500 degrees and it doesn't melt off or burn off. And these, like for now, my oven's on. Take it. I finish it off. I bring it to a boil. Bring it to a boil. Throw it in the oven. Five, ten minutes. I check it. I cut the salmon open a little bit. If you're worried and you want your salmon well done, you cut it open. As long as it's not pink inside, it's done. And if it is a little bit pink inside, it doesn't matter. Salmon's made to be eaten like sushi, rare, especially a good piece of salmon. And it stays even more juicy because the more you cook it, it gets dry. That's the whole big thing about this lesson. The sauce is the easy part. It's just like all my other sauces. And even though it's phenomenal, it's about cooking the salmon and doing it right. And even if you don't like it cooked that way, once you eat it cooked all the way, the next time try it and you'll get used to it. Just like I never loved uh, rare tuna. Um, my favorite thing now is a great sushi, great uh, to a piece of tuna, I blacken it with this pomegranate sauce on top or just by itself a little bit of chili paste. 
So now let's say the salmon is cooked. I'm going to finish it off over here just so you guys see. So now the same thing with all my other sauces. We're going to let this reduce, do the spoon trick, and you're done. You're going to put this on a plate. We're going to pretend there's spinach on it. I'm going to pour a little sauce on top, and you're good to go. And this is not only an unbelievable tasting dish, it's one of the healthiest. You have a nice piece of wild salmon. There's antioxidants in the garlic, the organic pomegranate juice. There's not one ingredient here that's bad, except maybe the chicken stock. If you people don't like chicken stock, use the organic vegetable stock. So this is a very, very healthy dish and people go crazy over this dish in my restaurant. One of my best selling dishes for salmon. So we're going to let that saute and then we're just going to sit and plate it. If I were you guys at home, the tip of technique, I have, I can withstand a lot of heat with my hands, I'm used to it. Always grab a saute pan, just get used to doing it, even if it's not hot. Because when you, when we're busy and we stick it in the oven, Sometimes you don't think and you go, you, you go grab and put it on top of the stove top and then your wife might walk by or husband might walk by and grab it. That's what my workers do. So I always tell them, don't take for granted it wasn't in the oven. If they get burned, it's their, not in a way their fault. But we always try and tell them when stuff's on here and we're busy and it's not only you cooking, always get used to grabbing with a rag. All right? So now this is basically done like my other ones. Look how nice that sauce and thick is coming out. Reduction once again, we're reducing the waters out and the chicken, reducing everything out and making it thick. So I'm going to use this and show you the, oh, there it is, boom. There you go. Done. Now you can keep cooking and getting really thick, or keep, I like to keep it at a medium thickness. Not too thick, not too thin. I'm going to take it off. Because once you take it off, here's another technique and tip, is when it cools, it thickens even more. So when you walk away and you come back five minutes later, you want to eat later, it'll be really thick. So what you do is you take a touch of chicken stock, add it, turn it on and warm it, and it thins it out. All right, so this came out perfect, this sauce. I'm going to just put it on a dish. What we do at the restaurant is put a nice piece of, um, nice, nice clump of uh, spinach on there. Put the sauce on the spinach first, and then all we do is drizzle the pond, right, the reduction on top of our salmon. Now you can see that the nice garlic and onions on there, the blackened spices. This is an unbelievable dish, and if it's a little tough to make it the first time, try and make it again. All right, so the main points of this lesson are, is really mainly about the salmon, on how to cook it, blacken it, um, how it's served usually at a restaurant, um, a little medium rare, and if somebody wants to cook through, we'll cook it all the way through, but then it gets a little, uh, a little dry. And then the reduction, the reduction is not really the main part because that's a simple sauce. And we, we went through all the onions and the garlic and all that stuff already. So once again, the main technique was all about the salmon, even which salmon to buy, if you like farm raised, buy the farm raised. But my my say, if you're gonna eat salmon, buy the co, buy a smaller piece. It's like when I tell people steak too. Don't buy a huge steak. Spend a lot of money. That's a choice piece. Buy a piece that's dry aged. Buy instead of 14 ounces, buy eight ounces. Just make healthier sides, more vegetables with the thing. So that's the lesson really: is portion control, better ingredients, always the best ingredients, the best piece of salmon, the best piece of steak. Just buy a little bit less of it, and then make more veggies or more potatoes on the side. Si bevi whisky and soda, poi tu siente disturbato, tua pallone.